At the sight of the crowds, Jesus' heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Then he summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon from Cana, and Judas Iscariot who betrayed them. Jesus sent out these twelve after instructing them thus, Do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So many teachings in this Gospel on this 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We're going to see some of them. First, priests are needed. Evangelizers are needed. The Lord takes pity on those people whom He says. We're like sheep without a shepherd. He asks the apostles, the community, Nothing that the harvest is abundant and the workers are few. He asked that we pray to the Father to incite vocations, to send workers to his harvest, to send workers to take care of these lost sheep. That happened in Jesus' time. It is true that he was just beginning. But today, this happens a lot more than then. In a country like Ireland, if I remember correctly, this year, Four or five have entered seminarians in all Ireland, among all the seminaries in Ireland. Countries like Ireland, one of the great Catholic countries in Europe, I'm not referring to its size, but to the faith, a country like Ireland. The crisis is absolute. The number of churches that are closed, put up for sale to become whatever is unceasing. Holland, Belgium, Germany, France but also Spain, Italy, Portugal as well. There are no vocations, even places where until recently this problem did not exist. United States, all of Latin America in general, there are no vocations. Of course, there are exceptions. How can we not remember the Diocese of Guadalajara in Mexico, for example? Well, or in Colombia, they are San San Rio Negro, Okay, there are exceptions. Unfortunately, today, in general, there are no vocations. The first thing to do is what the Lord says. Ask the owner of the harvest to send workers to his harvest. Ask the Lord to touch the hearts of young people, so that these young people feel the call to give everything for him, for love of him. Not for doing other kinds of things, even if they are good but for love of Jesus. It is for love to Jesus that we need to evangelize. It is for love of Jesus that we take care of those in need. Always for the love of Jesus. The consecration is to Christ. The consecration is not to some works, not even the works of the apostolate. The consecration is to Christ, and for Christ we leave everything. We leave what is most difficult to leave, which are the projects. It is harder to leave the illusions than realities. Well, we leave what is hardest to leave out of love of the Lord. We embark on the adventure of following Him and making ourselves available to Him. Second teaching, today's gospel tells names of the apostles. 
The Lord has asked for vocations. They come. However, who are the vocations that come? Angels? When one looks at this list, one gets impressed. The Lord chose from what he had. There is no doubt. A St. Francis or a St. John Bosco were not there to choose from. He chose what he had. The best of what he had. Hey, but they were not angels, huh? Some were people who had a history. I'm going to read some of the names again. For example, he says, James, the Zebedee, and John. Men with such a, ha such a tough and difficult character that Jesus called them the sons of thunder, ambitious people. Their mother, as their representative, who was there to ask Jesus an extraordinarily difficult moment when Jesus was not there for those things, because he was announcing his dead, for her children to be the first. They have to sit to your left and to your right. The Lord chooses them and loves them, not to mention how he loved St. John Zebedee, St. Peter. St. Peter, well, he knew who he was. St. Peter himself says to Jesus, Get away from me because I am a sinner, because it was true. On the night of Holy Thursday, at the most important moment, he betrays him. He denies him three times. He chooses him and appoints him head of the church. It is said that among others, there is also Matthew, the publican, the tax collector, a thief who charged more, collected taxes for the Romans, a collaborator with the Romans, with the oppressing people, with the conquering people, and who also kept apart for himself and had become rich with theft. However, he converts. He returns what he has stolen and follows Jesus. There is another here. He says in this translation, Simon of Cana, but who was actually Simon the Zealot. That is, he belonged to the sect of Zealots or Zealots who were the ones who killed the Romans, ambushing them and the collaborators of the Romans. Jesus has among his apostles a collaborator with the Romans and one who perhaps killed collaborators or was in the group that killed them. They were not exactly little angels. They were not perfect, nor were they before, nor were they after, not to mention Judas the traitor, Judas Iscariot, the Lord chooses them. What is the teaching? Let priests come. Let them come. Are they perfect? The priest has to struggle all his life. What is the teaching? Let priests come. Let them come. Are they perfect? The priest has to struggle all his life, like any baptized person. So to be perfect, to be in a permanent attitude of conversion, to get up if he falls. He has to fight all his life to be at Christ's service and at the service for the love of Christ of the community. However, he is a human being. What about if he is not perfect? We must ask him to be in that struggle and conversion attitude. What about if he is not perfect? If he falls? I don't love him anymore. I'm not talking about criminals, pedophiles. Because that's a tiny proportion. Unfortunately, they exist, but it's a tiny proportion. I'm talking about normal priests. I repeat, not criminals. Well, about normal priests, they are holy. We are holy, some of us. I consider myself a sinner. What you have to ask of the priest is for them to struggle to be holy. That is what you have to ask of him. St. Augustine used to say this to his parishioners when he was a bishop of the city of Hippo. I am a shepherd for you, and I am a Christian with you. That is, I have to take care of you, but I am also moving forward. Why does the laic ask the priest what he does not give more of what he gives, and I don't mean money? Why does the laic understand for himself that he is a sinner, that he needs confession and that he is in the path of holiness, but has not come. Instead, he claims for the priest to be angels. Has anyone ever, ever started to find out, to wonder what this represents for future priests? The feeling that you have that you're going to be judged without mercy, 
and without any compassion, and that those who are sinners, because they are normal sinners who want to convert, but they are sinners, they will not allow you even a temptation. I am not saying falling against the sixth commandment. No, not even if one day you get angry, there is a problem. The Cathars considered that a problem in the Middle Ages to the heresy of the Cathars. We are sinners, but we want to be served by the pure. Our Lord chose sinners as apostles and asked them to sanctify themselves. They did and died martyrs, but throughout their lives they had moments of weakness and fall before and after. Let us ask the Lord to send priests to his harvest. Let us welcome those priests, treating them with affection and also with patience, even with compassion. Let us help them so that they are on the path of holiness, which is what we must ask of them. The same that the priest asked the faithful, I welcome you, I welcome you, and I ask of you to be on the path of conversion. The same goes for the faithful with their priests, otherwise this harsh demand scares them away. Many don't dare to enter seminary because they feel that they are going to be judged with supreme intolerance and I'm not referring to certain deranged people, bad in the head, totally sick, who embittered the life of priests in parishes. That, unfortunately, exists in all parishes. I mean normal people. Normal people who very often have levels of demand for priests, which they don't have for themselves. Ask the other, what do you ask of yourself? If you recognize that you need God's patience, and that you are in the path of conversion, then accept that of the priest, who is also a human being, is also on the path of conversion. That is what you must ask for. Today's gospel finishes, Jesus says, Don't go to the pagan land, nor enter the cities of Samaria, but go to the lost sheep of Israel. Today, those who have never heard of God must be evangelized. However, the fact is that the first we must evangelize are the lost sheep of Israel. So many, so many baptized, but who don't know Jesus Christ. The worst thing is that they think they know him, who don't know what the church is and have a distorted opinion, the opinion that the world gives them of the church. Those whom Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI called baptized pagans. That's right. Those who... Those are the stray sheep today. We must go to them. It is much more difficult. Perhaps if you go to preach in a Muslim country, a certain monster com countries at least, you risk your life. Or perhaps if you go to preach in places where there are still animist populations. Perhaps you risk your life in another way, due to extreme weather conditions or of another type. But today, the lost sheep of the house of Israel are among us. And they are that immense, immense majority of baptized Catholics who are far from God. That it's much harder to evangelize those who have never known of Christ. Precisely, those who are to whom we all have the obligation to try to reach. Priests, of course, but also the laity. Because those who are far away may never talk to a priest, but perhaps in some special circumstance, a funeral but instead they will constantly dealing with lay people, some of whom are close to the Lord, and who have to be his evangelizers. So be it.